compensation over the last three years, including $1,000 bonuses for public and charter school teachers and principals last year. The governor added on Monday that it's critical to reward educators for their time efforts. Wake up to the Rick's Mountain Morning Show on 104.5 The Flame. This is a paid advertisement. It does not represent the views of WFLM ownership, management, or staff. This is the Cleveland Gary Show on 104.5 WFLM The Flame. Hi, good evening. Welcome to the Cleveland Gary Show Beyond Sports. We're having an amazing show for you tonight. Uh, and I say that because I'm so excited to be talking to a connoisseur of the music business. As you all know, I love music. I'm a music connoisseur. This gentleman has been in the music business for over 35 years. And uh, I'm going to bring him on in a minute. But before we bring him on, I want you all to go to clevelandgary.com. Sign up. Log in. There's going to be a trivia question tonight. And the first one that answers that trivia question, they are going to win a hundred and fifty dollars. You guys are putting it on me. It's so important. But in order to win, you got to play. You got to be on the field in order to win. So go to clevelandgary.com. If you're already signed up, just log in. And when I give you the trivia question, you're going to type in the answer right in the top hand corner. If you get it right, it'll say right answer. Now, if the second person comes along and get it right, it's going to say winner has already been chosen. So it's imperative that you go to clevelandgary.com and sign in or sign up so you can win that $150. It's important. And also, we talk about our social media network. It's important that we you know, dialogue with each other. You can post your comments, your pictures, upload videos, and uh, you can reply to questions as well. And so it's a very exciting place. And if you look at that platform, I can't even count. It will take me days to go through the members that we have. I don't even attempt. We've signed up so many members at a very, very fast pace of all colors, all races and nationality. And I'm so excited about that. So I encourage you to go to cleanair.com and join the social media network family Post your comments, post questions, and uh, let's just have a good time. So we're excited about this new social network that's growing at a very, very fast pace. Now, let's get into the thick of things. This next gentleman, his name is Sam Tate. Can you bring Sam on? They call him Sam the Sham. When you talk about DJs, disc jockeys, Notably in the urban culture, one of the most known, most famous DJs that ever set place on this planet. When you talk about the James Browns, the Aretha Franklins, the Otis Reddings, Jerry Butlers, Candy Staden, Aretha Franklin, even Michael Jackson, he has sat down and broken bread. He's met the best of the best. And since the statute of limitations have ran out, and we're in the digital world now, as it relates to MP3s, MP4s, you didn't have that back in those days. So music artists had to travel in their cars. You know, when you look at these music artists of of, of African descent, they didn't have the wherewithal back then. So they did whatever they had to do to make it. They were, even if they had to get on their bicycles to make it to that radio station, and shake that disc jockey's hand, they knew if that record hit the air and it spun, it was done by a DJ. It was over. History was made. And it's my honor and my pleasure to bring on my friend, Sam the Sham, the all-time greatest urban DJ that ever set foot. Sam, welcome. Nice to have you. Thank you so much, Cleveland. We're so excited about being here. And uh, we'll explain before the program's over how I've changed from Sam the Sham and how I got that name. But I'm now a gospel announcer on about 76 radio stations around the country playing the same type of music, but the lyrics are different. But we're excited about being here today. Today, absolutely. Sam, you got to tell me. I mean, I'm excited. How did you get the name Sam the Sham? Well, you know what? 
I start, well, first of all, as long as I can remember Sam Tate, I've been fascinated with microphones, Cleveland. Never been interested in television. I can remember growing up on the farm. I'd go around on the farm broadcasting into a stick in a corn cob, uh, just trying to be a dish jockey. But when I went off to college, I went to A&T State University in Greensboro, and I worked my started in 1964. So that's 58 years ago. Wow. Worked my way through college. But to, to answer your question, there everybody had a name. Prince Ike behind the mic, Slick Slack, uh, Merle the Pearl, Sam the Sham. So I was uh, just getting into the industry and I was sitting there watching Ike work that uh, morning. And I said, Ike, I don't know what to call myself. And he said, let me think about it. So he played one or two other records and then he came back. He said, I know what your name is. I said, what's that? Sam the Sham. Well, I started using the name Sam the Sham Cleveland and uh, for two or three weeks and the boss walked in. He said, I was on the air. He said, I don't like that name, Sam the Sham. I said, why? He said, do you know what a sham is? I said, really? I hadn't thought about it. So he made me go to the uh, to the dictionary and looking up and it was terrible, man. But you know, Sam the Sham was just a character. I never really tried to live up to that image. You know what I mean? Absolutely, absolutely. Interesting, interesting. Sam, when you look back in the day, in the, in the good old days is what my parents called them, way back when you had Otis Redding, James Brown, Jerry Butler, Aretha Franklin. You have met these people, you've talked to these people, y'all have shared stories, you built relationships with these people. Uh, tell, tell me a little bit about that experience. Yeah, that was quite an experience. You know, anytime an artist, uh, Cleveland, would come to town, the first place most of them would want to come to is the radio station for interviews. And then we would also MC the, co uh, the, the shows at the Coliseum. Now we're backstage in dressing rooms. What an opportunity for a little 19, 20 year old kid, uh, college kid, just getting into radio. But yes, I used to drive the legendary Otis Redding around. James Brown knew I liked to fly. He let, let me go out and get on his Learjet, man. And I never will forget, uh, you know, Michael Jackson, and all of them. But uh, I uh, went out to his Learjet. I said, well, listen, you mind if I go out? He said, go on. And uh, I never will forget the plane had all of the seats taken out of it, Cleveland. Uh, the, the seats right behind the pilot and the seats uh, in the back. In the middle of the, the floor was empty, but it was full of uh, uh, suits. You know, James Brown would uh, change three times during a show, but right. suit bags and all, man. And uh, yeah, he was quite a character. Wow, James Brown. You know, you, you and I were talking here, you know, prior to the show, and uh, you said something very interesting, very interesting, Sam. You look at entrepreneurship, you look at the music business, you look at different industries, and uh, as it relates to business and what many, many artists don't understand and many artists got taken advantage of back in the day, they sold 500,000 records, which was gold back in the day. They sell a million, which was platinum. But what many people didn't understand, they were very famous. But when it came to financial prosperity and having a foundation up under them, it was it wasn't there when you look at the contracts historically three percent two percent one percent uh uh uh, uh, uh monies against royalties and literally a lot of them never made any money but we were talking about the legendary james brown and what examples he set as not only as a great performer but on the other side of the fence this guy understood this business and music elaborate on that a little Yes, well, you know, uh, I'm going to say this, but the statute of limitation, I guess, protects me. I, I guess many of your audience out there knows what payola is, you know what I mean? In other words, folks, that's when an artist would come to town. I'm the little jock on the air. He's slide $100 under the table. Look here, brother. I got to hop and smoke it for me. I didn't care if it was a piece of junk. If I couldn't stand the way it sounded, I'd uh, put it on the air, turn the monitor down in, in the studio until it was ready to go off. But you know, James Brown was classy. We would uh, MC the James Brown shows at the Coliseum 
And before James Brown had his business manager take care of the announcers, you had to go back in James Brown's dressing room two o'clock in the morning and listen to this pep talk by James Brown. And I'll never forget, uh, Brother Cleveland, uh, James Brown said, uh, uh, tonight, he said, you older cats need to stop acting a so-and-so clown behind the microphone and go into ownership and management and stuff like that. He said, tonight, I'm worth $10 million, but I'm a miracle. You don't uh, find situations like me every day. Go into ownership and management. And I can tell those older dudes, man, 2.30 in the morning, man, come on, give me my bread so I can go home. But I was just a young man, Cleveland, uh, 19 to 20 years old, just getting started in the industry. And I never forgot go into ownership. And uh, we wound up getting a license to build our own radio station in Boone, North Carolina. That's the home of Appalachian State University, just outside of Boone in Blowing Rock, North Carolina in the Boone market. And uh, I never will forget uh, the morning we signed on, I told the old boy on the air, I said, look here, son, don't uh, throw that switch until I get out here in my car and find the frequency. And I want to hear the very first word ever spoken on the God-given uh, radio station. So, uh, Brother Cleve, I never will forget, the old boy came on the air, good morning, at this time, WOIX begins this very first day of broadcasting. <laughs> and let me tell you something, brother, a little tear came right down through there. <laughs> but it was a dream come true. And, and oh. James Brown, the Godfather of a soul, encouraged me. You know what is so interesting, Sam, that moment in time, just saying what he said about going into ownership. Prior to that moment, had you thought about owning your own radio station? I had dreamed of it, you know, because ever since I was a kid, I dreamed of being on the air and owning my own station, but he sort of drove it home, you know, and it, it was that encouragement that I needed because during those days, nobody would encourage you to do anything positive, hardly, in many instances, you know. Right, right. That's interesting. It's just amazing that it shows you, uh, you know, we are supposed to be examples, you know, uh, and uh, giving back is not necessarily giving something to someone tangible as a substance, you know, just encouraging words sometimes can make a tremendous difference in somebody's life can change their entire life. And many young folks have went to, you know, motivational speeches, uh, have talked with people that have been affluent and have given them just a little bit of advice <clears throat> to give them what they need to become what they became. And so that's something for all of us to really take notice of. Just that little saying <clears throat> that James Brown told uh, Sam the Sham at that time, put him over the top and say, hey, I can do this. I can own my own radio station, man. No matter what times we're in, I can be independent and make something of my life and have financial substance. And that's an amazing testimony, uh, uh, Sam. That's, that's pretty amazing. Now, Tim, Sam, moving forward, <clears throat> in this world in which we live, we all are gonna have obstacles we have to hurl over. That's a part of living. But when you look back in the old days, I don't feel sorry for anyone. It's exciting to talk about those times because history is real, it's factual. It took place, evidential, it did. And I think it's good sometimes that young folks of all races and all, of, and all colors understand the meaning of what life was about, really about back then, not just, not just African-Americans. I think all races of people need to understand it because it gives us a clear indication of why we are where we are today. And if you don't know some things about your past, you don't use your past for a negative. You use it as a reference tool to be a force in your future. Tell us about some of the things these famous artists had to deal with in their, in their, in their past professional life as it relates to hotels. You think a guy goes out and spin on the floor like James Brown, sing a song like Aretha Franklin, they should be up in the Risk Carlton or the best hotels. Tell the truth and how it really was for these famous artists. Well, I was, yeah, I was born in 1945, April the 30th, 1945, 
in a little over 30 days, I'll be 77 years old, Brother Cleveland. But James Brown, for example, when he would come to town, when he would come to Greensboro, for example, he was not permitted to stay in the, in the area hotels. He had to stay at the Hayes Taylor YMCA. And it was, I remember, I remember what white and colored water tastes like at the water fountain. I remember having to go to the back of the bus. I remember not being able to go into a restaurant and sit down and eat. But, uh, uh, you know, times have changed. But uh, uh, I, I, re I remember those days and it was terrible. Even with the, with the gospel singers, um, uh, the legendary Ira, Ira Tucker with the Dixie Hummingbird tells a story. He was somewhere in Georgia and, uh, and uh, they were stopping in this big Cadillac to uh, get some gas. He said he was hungry. He wanted to go in and get a Coke and uh, a nab or something. And he said, as he pulled the screen door open, this big 357 was in his face. And, and I can't tell you what the guy said for him to back out. But anyway, what I'm saying, times, times were different. I remember uh, I was six years old. My mom, I'm from Morganton, North Carolina, but my mom was in the basement of Belk's department store in the lingerie department, uh, Brother Cleve, and I didn't want to get caught dead there. But anyway, um, she was shopping. I was standing up front. I looked over and I saw the water fountains, white only and colored only. Now, I knew what that colored water tastes like, but I wondered what that white water tastes like. I looked around. Nobody was looking. I, I ran over there and got a slug of that white water. And guess what, man? It tasted just like that colored water. I was <laughs> truly confused. I didn't understand. Let's see. Okay, what's the big deal, man? But anyway, those were the days. Interesting, interesting story. These are these are events that actually took place. That's amazing. You would think, you know, sitting in front of your television growing up as a kid, you know, we only had about three or four, maybe five channels. And when you saw James Brown that, or uh, or even Michael Jackson, Aretha Franklin, Otis Redding, you know, back in the day. That was a big deal. You're thinking, wow, they're famous. You know, whoa, this is amazing. But in actuality, when you hear a story that James Brown, you know, this million platinum selling artist having to stay at the YMCA, that, that's mind boggling. I, I don't even know how I would have survived that. I mean, you know, it goes to show you how they paid it forward, how they paved the way for the generations, you know, that are here right now and think they have tough times. Oh man, they can't even imagine yeah. what those kind of times, not even I. So it's just a tribute to those great artists and people like yourself who, who has been pioneers in the, your perspective profession and have paved the way, you know, for us. And it's just a tribute to you and all of those artists. And man, that's just a blessing. Truly it is. Yeah. Please, let me let me tell you this. Um, uh, a bit of philosophy I learned from the legendary old black comedian Pigmeat Markham. Now, you're probably a little young, but he came along doing Red Fox, you know, Sanford and Son, Moms Mabel, doing that era. But anyway, he was in town. He and his sidekick, Baby Seal, were going to be at the local El Rocco Supper Club that night. And I interviewed him that morning. We got off the air about 10 o'clock, went back uh, to a little office back there in the back, and uh, started talking about life in general. He was originally from Durham, North Carolina, but uh, I can't talk about anybody, Brother Cleve, but uh, Pigmeat Markham was a pretty rough looking character, spe especially once he got in character. But he said something, started talking about life in general. He said, uh, you know something, Brother Sam? When I was a baby, I was an ugly baby. He said, I was so doggone ugly that when we went out the recess, the kids would see me walking across the playground and he said they would fall out laughing until it occurred to me, wait a minute, I can make people laugh, something you don't see people doing much anymore. And he said, on that day, I decided to become a comedian. And he said, today, I'm a millionaire. And you know some <laughs> brother Sam? I cries all the way to the blankety blank bank. And the moral <laughs> of the story, Cleveland, is to turn your disadvantages into advantages. You know what I mean? Oh, wow. That is so inspirational to me, to all of the listeners. Sam, that's just amazing. Um, and, I, you know, and, and with that, with that being said, you know, with uh, two minutes left here before we go to break, uh, 
this question, uh, it, it's a very, a very important question to you, very deep uh, question, because I want the listeners to, to, to really, really listen at, at this answer here. Uh, what advice, I mean, you've seen quite a bit in your lifetime. And uh, from our conversations, God has been good to you. You know, we've all had hurdles we have to, to cross. But when you look at, if you had to give advice to somebody and say, hey, if you do this, you can make it. Or if you exude this kind of character, you can make it. Doesn't mean you're going to be exempt, you know, from running into hurdles. You know, uh, you're going to have those. That's just part of living. What advice would you give, give, give listeners as it relates to happiness and success? You know, what what defines you? What what's your what's your take on that? Well, uh, it's very simple, uh, Brother Cleveland. Uh, put God first. I wish somebody would have taught me this fifty some years ago. That's why you know I wanted to syndicate Sam the Sham. But the good Lord wanted me to syndicate, but he wanted me to syndicate his gospel. So we are the host of Gospel GEMS, Gospel Gems, 76 radio stations around the country. And uh, it's because I learned the hard way to put God first. And uh, I would say that to, to anybody. And uh, before we get ready to wrap up, I would want to, uh, I would want to let the audience know how much uh, uh, a privilege is, is has been for me to meet you. And I want to say congratulations on your great show now, and also especially for Ecrid. We're promoting Ecrid on Gospel Gems on our syndicated show. And uh, if if uh, if you want to find out what Gospel Gems is like, go to gospelgemsnetwork.com. <laughs> scroll down to the bottom, and you hear a few few of, of the old the golden Gospel Gems. Sam Cook and all of them started out in gospel. Thank you so much. Wow, it was an honor. It was a pleasure, Sam, to spend these 20 minutes with you. And I know we'll have you back. I, I, I'm so grateful you took out some time with your busy schedule uh, to share a lot of your your past, your your history in the music business. And uh, this is Sam the Sham. He's my friend. And uh, we're so happy to have you, Sam. And God bless you. And we will see you soon. You guys keep those doubts locked. We'll, we'll be right back. This is the Cleveland Gary Show on 104.5 WFLM, The Flame. Sure, people have told you to make sure you have something to fall back on. Make sure you got something to fall back on, honey. But I never understood that concept, having something to fall back on. If I'm going to fall, I don't want to fall back on anything. I want to fall forward. I figure at least this way I'll see what I'm going to hit. You've decided that you're not going to allow your circumstances to define you. You've decided that you're not going to allow the events, the things, the people, life, determine who you become. Black Wall Street in Tulsa, Oklahoma was a true event that took place. A group of African Americans got together and created an economic system that created wealth amongst each other by circulating their dollars within their own community. They were so financially successful until they were bombed, beaten, many killed, resulting in destroying what was once known as Black Wall Street. The Black Shopping Channel is back on the street again to stay. Support the Black Shopping Channel vendors in this new fintech company that is connecting vendors to shoppers, resulting in circulating wealth back into the urban community. And hip hop, rap, and R&B music artists are reaching the world with their music at blackshoppingchannel.com. Have you had a problem getting approved for a mortgage, car, or personal loan? You want a home, you want a car, but your Equifax, Experian, TransUnion credit reports are not satisfactory to lenders, so you're denied credit approval. If you or anyone you know have been denied credit approval in these areas, the answer is ECRIT, the new credit bureau that can validate your credit worthiness to get you approved through ECRIT's lending division, even if you've had a bankruptcy, foreclosure, or collections. 
more information, go to www.ecrid.com. Create your own ecrid credit report by adding your light bill, water bill, mobile phone, auto insurance, and even rental payments. All validate your credit worthiness at ecrid. Go to www.ecrid.com and sign up today. It's free. Get the keys to your new home or your new car. The Black Shopping Channel is America's first 24-hour minority TV shopping channel that aired on Dish Network in 14 million homes. Visit our website at www.blackshoppingchannel.com. If you're a small business owner and would like to sell your products on the Black Shopping Channel, go to www.blackshoppingchannel.com and sign up as a member. It's free. Upload your product, schedule live stream events, music artists, sell your music, and control your career. It's time to get in the game and start supporting our small business owners and music artists. Go to Black Shopping Channel and shop today. Black Wall Street is back at www.blackshoppingchannel.com. The Black Shopping Channel, giving back, moving forward. 104.5 WFLM Flight Center. 104.5 The Flame. The hottest star in the hits and oldies. Bigger and better. This is a paid advertisement. It does not represent the views of WFLM ownership, management, or staff. This is the Cleveland Gary Show on 104.5 WFLM The Flame. Hi, right, welcome back to the show Beyond Sports. I'm Cleveland Gary, your host. We had an amazing time with Sam and Sham, my friend. Wow, words of wisdom. I tell you, knowledge is power. Man, but wisdom, you can't beat it. I mean, to sit and listen to him talk about the culmination of experiences he, he's had in the music business when you talk about the legendary James Brown, Otis Redding, Aretha Franklin, Michael Jackson, and you all know back in the day, payola was, was what was happening. If you can go into that radio station and give that DJ a bag of money, that record is going to spin, whether it was good or bad. And that's so, so that that that's so exciting. I mean, it was just amazing. Now, moving forward, uh, we have uh, my partner, he'll come on in a minute, but uh, I'm, I'm contemplating whether or not I should uh, throw this trivia question at you now or wait till the end of the show. Um, I thought I'd make it a little bit easier tonight. I know you've struggled with a couple of these trivia questions in the past and I had one of the listeners say, well, man, you make these trivia questions so tough. Can't you just lighten the load a little bit, man? Let us win some of the money. All right, so here's what I did, all right? I'll go ahead and I'll throw the trivia question out at you right now. The first one that answers that trivia question will win $150, all right? You can do a lot with 150 bucks. If you don't want it, give it to me if you answer the question because McDonald's is right down the street. I have Panera Bread. Yeah, I'm giving them some props. They're gonna write a check, but the bottom line is I like to eat. So you can give me that 150 bucks, no problem. Now, the trivia question, for those who've watched me play a little bit of football, uh, you should hit this right on the button. What number? Here's a trivia question. What was my football number in 10th grade at Martin County High School? That's the trivia question. So to win 150 bucks, you have to go to trivianggary.com, sign up or log in, type in the trivia, uh, type, type in the answer, and the winner gets to 150. Now, if you type in the right answer, Second, behind the winner, it's going to say winner has already been chosen. All right. So you got a chance to do that. What it does, it takes you into the social media platform. <clears throat> You'll see all of all of those people that have signed up in such a short period of time and they're commenting and they're posting. And uh, this platform is about collaboration. You know, we want questions and answers to questions. We, and you have to do that by posting and commenting. We want small business owners to understand 
you know, the fundamentals of business, how to open up a checking account, how to start, I mean, should I, how to, <clears throat> to make a right decision on whether to form a corporation uh, in, in, in a legal format, whether it's a C corporation or S corporation, a sole proprietor or LLC. These are fundamental things you need to understand and know as it relates to running your own business uh, from many different angles and many different reasons. You should know this. You should understand you know, the foundations of, 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 of how business should be run, you know, putting together a business plan prior to putting your shingle out, you know, understanding the integral parts of business that gives you every angle possible for you to be successful. That's very important. And we understand, you know, capital structure, capital formation is very, very important. Uh, you know, from time to time, we'll have CEOs of uh, NASDAQ company, publicly traded companies. And, uh, you know, uh, fortunately, I've been blessed to have a, you know, publicly traded company as it relates to ECRIT with the stock symbol ECBB. And, um, and it's important, you know, I want you to be the very best you can be. And it's nothing like collaborating, you know, you know, we can go to school, we can get degrees, but when you're in the trenches out there every single day, you know, running that business, so many things can happen. You know, so many curveballs will be thrown at you. It will happen. It's inevitable. Nothing, nothing you can not think of won't happen in business. It will be, it will happen. You know, you know, God blessed me to play, you know, football and baseball and I play, played them both, both professionally, <clears throat> you know, but when you have a gift to do something, I mean, and you love to do it, it's not hard, but it does not mean it's not challenging. You're gonna have challenges. And when you're dealing in the world of business as it relates to capital formation, you need a thorough understanding of the fundamentals and how to implement and, and, and maneuver in these areas that's going to get you over those tough times. That's why I like the social media post because I want business owners, small business owners who drives this economy I want small business owners to come onto the platform and post questions and don't be embarrassed. And, and uh, the other business owners who have answers to your questions can answer those questions. That this is what makes the world a better place. This is what brings you up you know, to higher grounds, having the knowledge to apply the applications in business that's going to get you from A to B to B to C all the way to the very end of the alphabet. And uh, it's imperative because when you're successful, we all are successful. So that's why I, I want you to truly, truly, you know, take it upon yourself. It's no charge to sign up and uh, post your comments. You know, you can even post photos. Those of you, you know, music artists, you can post your MP3s as well. So I say that to say this, let's do it. All right. Just the, the Nike sl slogan, just do it. So I'm going to say, hey, let's do it now. Uh, our next guest, I don't know if they are ready or chimed in. I talked to him here a little bit ago. It's Jamie Knight. Jamie's out of Philadelphia. Um, she's a, a, a music artist, and I've known her for many, many years since she was like this big when she was crawling pretty much, and she grew up, and boy, it's been a long time, very, very good. Uh, friends with her family. Her, her, her father was not in heaven. Her mother is here. And we've just been friends. They're family. We've been friends and she's my, and what do you call me? What's my, what's, what do you call me? I'm Uncle, Uncle Cleve. That's right, right. And so it, it's, and, but you know, what's so interesting about Jamie, like I said, I've known her from since knee high and uh, she, she's just a remarkable woman. Wow. And, uh, James also, uh, her brother. But Jamie has been singing since she was, I don't know, since she was crawling. She's always had a microphone, you know, in front of her. And uh, she knows, I mean, so I just wanted to talk to her since we were talking to my friend, Sam Sham, uh, about the good old days in the music business. She's uh, a, a, a sang many songs, wrote many songs, and I mean, What's interesting about uh, Jamie is the fact that, uh, you know, being very good friends, we've broken bread together. I mean, when I say she's my niece, that's my niece. And she knows, you know, when I get on her, I get on her, okay? She knows I keep it real. 
but she will tell you about the music business and uh, the highs and the lows and, um, you know, the challenges she's had and what she think of, you know, a lot of aspiring, you know, artists out there, Jamie, tell us a little bit about your experiences in the music business. Well, um, you said it correctly. I, I actually sang before I talked. So I just always wanted to sing. It's something that I love to do more than I love to do anything. And so um, it's a shock to the system when you get into a business where there's so, so many other things. I mean, of course, in any business world, any business realm, there's, there's a lot of things that you deal with other than just selling the product. Um, but I would say that in the music business, it's, it's the most of that that I've ever seen. And so just dealing with the politics, uh, dealing with how those politics sometimes don't coincide with your morals um, and, and kind of a lot of the times ending up in a situation where you're having to make big decisions about whether you want to do what you love at any cost or whether you don't. Wow, interesting. It's amazing, you know, Jamie, earlier I was talking to Shan, uh, Sam the Sham. Mm -hmm. He, uh, you know, Sam has been, he was in the music business 58 years. Oh my gosh. Before I was born and he was telling us stories about, uh, you know, his relationship with James Brown and Otis mm -hmm. Redding and, uh, you know, Paola, you know, yeah. the statute of limitations are gone so we can talk about that. Uh, it, it, it's interesting. I, I mean, I've listened to probably I've listened to every song you've ever written, ever produced. I've been there in the studio when you were this high recording. Um, what was some of the most discouraging experiences you've encountered in the business uh, that kind of said that made you say to yourself, "I love singing, I love music, but it's not fair. The business is not fair." It, you know. Just because you're famous, it doesn't mean you're the best artist. Right. What are some of these encounters that that have kind of have given you like a, a, a not necessarily a positive, you know, uh, a look as it relates to the music business? Um, I would say music being stolen definitely that's a discouraging um, because when you put your heart and soul into something. Um, musically it's your story right it's your story that you're putting out just like you write a book of your life so if you wrote a book of your life and get up every day at 5 a.m and you write a chapter a day and then you get it edited and you do all this work on it and then all of a sudden someone else left their name on it that would be discouraging so that um having stylistic things stolen that is very discouraging but probably most of all I would say preparing yourself for a lifetime to do something and really getting great at it for the purpose of being able to do it. So just like if you go to college to be a lawyer, you know, you, you find out the amount of time you need to go and you go. If you go to school to be a doctor, you find out the amount of time you need to go and you go, you study, you know, you do whatever, whatever prerequisites are necessary for you to get to that goal. Um, to do all of that and then to get to the point where it's about wearing tight clothes or going to this party or that party, like everything other than uh, perfecting, having perfected my craft, that's discouraging. It's most discouraging. That's interestingly said, Jamie, because I think it will, that sends a message to a lot of young ladies out there who aspire to be a music artist. And, uh, and, and it's, it's like not being able to be yourself. I mean, you talk about morals, you talk about principles, and uh, I mean, you know how you sound, you know you can sing, you know, uh, to there's no tomorrow. Mm -hmm. But to uh, put somebody in a, in a position that's, that contrasts to their beliefs, that can be very dis discouraging to an aspiring music artist because it, it, takes, it takes the love out of the music. It's not about music. And yeah. so I do commend you for that. And I, I've known, you know, uh, you know, uh, you've had many, many offers. I mean, big labels, names I won't even mention. Mm -hmm. And I, and I said to Shuggy, you know, that was a father name, but you know, so you know, I said, Shuggy, man, why would Jamie turn this big label down? 
but you know, you know, you you you, you find um, you can love to do something and really have a passion for it. But when you learn about the politics in that particular industry, it can turn you away. And same as football, love mm-hmm. running football, love love football like you wouldn't believe. If they never pay a football player or a baseball player, as deep down in my heart and soul, I would have done it for free. I did it on the playgrounds for free all my life. Mm-hmm. I mean, I love playing sound like football. So, but when you talk about politics, contracts, it can be, it can become discouraging because you're taking the fun out of it. And, uh, and, and I would assume the music business is the same way. Yeah, I think, um, like I said, it's, it's, it's probably the, it's probably the worst of them all, I would say, because it's, um, it, they, it makes it about everything other than music. Um, today though, I would say with, with YouTube and uh, Instagram, Facebook, I think it, it probably is easier now for young up and coming artists to be able to do their music in the way that they want because they have a platform now, right? So like when I was doing it, um, you know, the goal was to get signed by a major label, but that's no longer the path that has to be taken if you want to be a successful artist. So now probably is easier because you can kind of put stuff out how you want and you can, you know, you have a platform that you can use to be heard. Yeah, absolutely. It's totally different, totally different. Mm-hmm. Wow. You've had a remarkable, remarkable journey in the business and, and what many don't know, uh, what, 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 what I've always liked about Shuggy and Dar. Um, Dar is a mom. Uh, they own a lot of music. And one mm-hmm. thing about the Knights, they own their masters. They own the right <laughs> for them. And as we were talking earlier, Jamie, uh, Sam and I, how many artists were so famous, they would sell a million records, yeah. but if you're only getting one or two points on that album, and if you're famous, but they have no money. But you're not, yeah. Now, so, ma- now major labels are doing those, the 360 deals where they're getting it used to be like bad enough, you know, the artist is maybe making like a, a penny off of each cell or something, but at the shows they can make that up because they're keeping all that money. Well, now the labels are like having a hand in every single thing you do. So like if you do a show, they're getting a portion of that. If, you know, of course, they're getting a portion off the album. They're getting a portion off of anything else you do. And that's, that's a lot. Yeah. So um, that's why I say today, just the independent route. It's probably best better. for artists better. today because you yeah. can... Do what you want. Yeah, I would say, yeah, no question. It's much better. With social media, having access to e-commerce, uploading MP3s, yeah, you can definitely control your own destiny. Um, well, am- amazing. Tell me, what drives Jamie Knight? What drives you? God drives me. My relationship with God drives me. Amen. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I don't know if I would have been able to come out of that um, spiritually alive if I didn't have a relationship with God, wow. because it shaped my um, shaped my idea and opinion of why I even had the gift of music in the first place. Absolutely, absolutely, amazing, amazing. And you've been very fortunate to have you know people. You know, should you dar and uh, me always you know, get on you when I need to get on you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> been like, yeah. Had some amazing, amazing times together. Jamie, I'll tell you, um, if you had to give any young woman advice who wants to be their own boss and uh, be a good person, family is important. As we, you, you heard all of us say this a million times, you know, without family, it's worth it. It doesn't matter how much money you made, how many business we yeah. run, men yeah. are talking about all the time. But what, it, what, what, what's, you, you say your relationship with God. Uh, you've been in the music business for a long time. If you had to do anything over different, would you do anything different? Um, I mean, I, it's a hard question to answer because I'm still in the living portion of it. I'm still, I'm 
still in the land of the living. So I kind of, I can't, there's, there's still some future to happen. So I, I kind of don't know, but, um, there's probably a lot of things that I would do differently. Um, I would listen to myself more right. and do what I want to do more. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have listened to anybody as much as I did. I would just do what I want to do. Just go around. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> not, not with respect to her, really, <laughs> with re because you know she's just always. But with respect to just um, when I was when I would create the music and you know um, when I was really on the path of getting a record deal, like being concerned about um, the thoughts of executives and you know what their input was I probably wouldn't if I had it to do over I wouldn't I wouldn't even consider it I considered it before but I wouldn't even consider it now um and I would probably say I would do that in all aspects of my life I considered a lot of other people's thoughts and opinions before and I would not even consider it now because ultimately when I get to the gates I'm not going to be able to bring up the consideration of anybody else's right. opinion right. so that's right well jamie that's it hey we're going to go to a break the bottom line is this you know crisis in your life is number one it's yep. brought you far and you've overcome a lot and uh, you're a champion and uh, you uh you're doing the knocking out these days <laughs> got it all on the and uh, i don't you, know <laughs> well you work yes you do uh, tell James I said hi, little James. Tell I Dar shall. I said hi, and you take care. And always remember, who am I? Uncle Cleve. That's right. <laughs> Jamie and I, we'll be right back. Keep those dials locked. This is the Cleveland Gary Show on 104.5 WFLM, The Flame. Sure, people have told you to make sure you have something to fall back on. Make sure you got something to fall back on, honey. But I never understood that concept, having something to fall back on. If I'm going to fall, I don't want to fall back on anything. I want to fall forward. I figure at least this way I'll see what I'm going to hit. You've decided that you're not going to allow your circumstances to define you. You've decided that you're not going to allow the events the things, the people, life, determine who you become. Black Wall Street in Tulsa, Oklahoma was a true event that took place. A group of African Americans got together and created an economic system that created wealth amongst each other by circulating their dollars within their own community. They were so financially successful until they were bombed, beaten, many killed, resulting in destroying what was once known as Black Wall Street. The Black Shopping Channel is back on the street again to stay. Support the Black Shopping Channel vendors in this new fintech company that is connected vendors to shoppers, resulting in circulating wealth back into the urban community. And hip-hop, rap, and R&B music artists are reaching the world with their music at blackshoppingchannel.com. Have you had a problem getting approved for a mortgage, car, or personal loan? You want a home, you want a car, but your Equifax, Experian, TransUnion credit reports are not satisfactory to lenders, so you're denied credit approval. If you or anyone you know have been denied credit approval in these areas, the answer is eCred, the new credit bureau that can validate your credit worthiness to get you approved through eCred's lending division, even if you've had a bankruptcy, foreclosure, or collections. For more information, go to www.ecred.com. Create your own ecred credit report by adding your light bill, water bill, mobile phone, auto insurance, and even rental payments. All validate your credit worthiness at ecred. Go to www.ecred.com and sign up today. It's free. Get the keys to your new home or your new car. 
The Black Shopping Channel is America's first 24-hour minority TV shopping channel that aired on Dish Network in 14 million homes. Visit our website at www.blackshoppingchannel.com. If you're a small business owner and would like to sell your products on The Black Shopping Channel, go to www.blackshoppingchannel.com and sign up as a member. It's free. Upload your product, schedule live stream events, music artists, sell your music, and control your career. It's time to get in the game and start supporting our small business owners and music artists. Go to Black Shopping Channel and shop today. Black Wall Street is back at www.blackshoppingchannel.com. The Black Shopping Channel, giving back, moving forward. 104.5, Fort Pierce, Stewart, Vero Beach, Port St. Lucie. This is a paid advertisement. It does not represent the views of WFLM ownership, management, or staff. This is the Cleveland Gary Show on 104.5 WFLM, The Flame. Hi, welcome back to the show, Beyond Sports. I'm Cleveland Gary, your host. We've had a great show tonight. We've had Sam the Sham, and we've also had... Jamie Knight, who was an aspiring <clears throat> music artist, was in the business for a long time, someone I've known for a long time, long time. But what I didn't put emphasis on, Jamie is, uh, is an amazing writer as well, he wrote a lot of songs and understands the publishing business exceptionally well, the copyright business, and have uh, done very well, you know, in, in that part of the business. That's why I wanted to, to bring her on. Um, uh, we have... Um, a few minutes left on the show, and I'm going to bring on my my partner, uh, Bill Houston, who's in the trenches with me every single day, and uh, we're just going to uh, you know dialogue a little bit and uh, kind of bring you up to speed on what he's been doing out there in the world of business, via entrepreneurship, crowdfunding, you name it, he's doing it. What's up, Bill? Hey, how's it going? Um, Glad to be here. Really appreciate this opportunity. Uh, I, I tell you, I, I had some thoughts planned for tonight, but <laughs> after listening to the first two guests, uh, you know, they both really hit on something that uh, that they kind of touched me in a personal way, um, and, and also in a in a philosophical way. Today, um, you know, earlier today, I was at a uh, at a political event, and uh, I, I was listening to some candidates talk and. Uh, you know, they talked about everything and they talked around everything except business and economics and, you know, what really makes something sustainable. And uh, as, as I listened, um, um, you know, to, uh, to Mr. Sam and, and I listened to Jamie talk about, um, you know, the business side of it, the business side. You know, he talked about James Brown saying, you know, it's about ownership. And, you know, without that business side, there is no sustainability. And, uh, you know, it's, 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 uh, it's kind of cruel, I guess, but it's a reality that, you know, if you're an artist, if you're an athlete, if you're a lawyer, whatever you are, um, you know, you're, you're going to have your time and then your time is going to be gone. Uh, but, you know, if, if you're building that wealth and you have that ownership, when your time is ended, that is something that you can pass on to the next, you know, generations and the generations after that. And, you know, that there's no real opportunity to pass a job along and, uh, you know, really understanding that. And uh, I, I just went, when I, when they talked about that tonight, it really kind of touched me uh, because of where I was earlier today. And again, I listened to people talk about all these problems and how to solve these problems, but none of them, touched on, you know, small business development, job creation, um, you know, wealth building, investment in the community. And, and I'm just like, wow, <laughs> if without those things, nothing else is going to happen. You know, uh, I, I, uh, I did a program one time, a um, long time ago, and we called it owners and loners. And if you're not an owner or a loner, then, then you're on the wrong side of the equation. So I, I really appreciate the guests uh, who were on talking about the, the business side of entertainment. Yeah, very true. I mean, what's so interesting, it's parallel. It runs parallel. You know, you have different industries, you have different sectors, you know, you have biotech, you have fintech, you have uh, 
industrial, healthcare, you have a variety of, of, of industries, but what runs parallel with those business businesses are, are, are finances, you know, capital infusion, you know, and understanding the dynamics of, of business, as you touched upon, you know, uh, it's very, 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 very important. And, and the two guests, you know, we had tonight, uh, uh, kind of, you know, touched on that in, in a very unorthodox way. You know, when you look at James Brown, the legendary James Brown, man, I mean, I just can turn YouTube on and watch that guy perform like there's no tomorrow. And it, it was very, you know, uh, enlightening to hear you know that James had a tremendous business fundamental sound business mind and I knew this many years ago and growing up as a, a little boy I really didn't understand you know when I would watch him perform you know that's where Michael Jackson those guys got all those savvy moves you know but I, I learned as I got older when I got you know in the NFL and, and, and I was studying you know these people and you know being in Los Angeles and Hollywood and I haven't met a lot of these people too but I never met James Brown but I just I, I got to learn a lot about him and Matt King Cole and from my understanding Matt King Cole was, was the first brother that lived in Beverly Hills and when you talk about uh, Ray Charles who was a very affluent business guy you know, and, uh, you know, but getting back to James and, and the Nat King Coles, these guys really set a precedent as it relates to having a fundamentally sound, you know, uh, business mind. And, and that's that's one of the things I admired about them. Yeah, a absolutely. And, and it, it keeps you, you know, it keeps you long standing, um, you know, even after maybe your music is out of style, um, you know, when, when you're able to move back uh, you know, to behind the scenes, um, you know, I don't know a lot about the music business, but uh, I know in the uh, in the early 80s, I was uh, I was a big, big fan of the time. And, um, you know, after the time broke up, you know, you the think time? about it. You mean more than the time? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you just ask my kids. Uh, I am still a fan. <laughs> okay. I am still a fan. What are some of the other groups you like? What about MJ? MJ, Teddy Pendergrass, Prince. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. I yeah. can tell you what rock and roll got much. I, you know, I do. I listen. I listen to rock and roll. I, I listen. I, I like everything except country. And uh, you know, and and I worked at this place for a while, and they listened to country music all the time. And before I knew it, I liked country music. Um, so I'm I'm kind of kind of like a like a chameleon there. But, you know, when, when I think about the time, and yes, yes, I love the time. But, you know, after they broke up, you know, Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis, uh, you know, they weren't they weren't in front on the stage anymore playing the music, but they were behind the scenes still making hit records for everyone else. And their longevity went on and on and on, even after their music, um, you know, that funk rock wasn't so popular anymore. And, and, and I think that you know, understanding that it's that business that it helps things move forward and makes them sustainable. Um, you know, understanding as I listen to those politicians tonight, um, you know, talking about all the problems and, you know, so many of those problems are economically driven, right? If, if you know, if people, if people have jobs and those jobs are able to sustain their lives and their lifestyles, chances are they're not going to be out committing crimes. And, uh, you, you know, it, it's just, you know, really understanding that and, and being able to say, okay, this is what makes something sustainable, um, you know, and once we create a business model that continues to grow that money and keep that money circulating and, you know, creating jobs and creating wealth through by creating value, you know, that's where you have to be. And that's the side of the equation. I think a lot of times people, people really miss and they, you know, they, they, they don't understand that. Um, I, I saw a nonprofit organization get funded one time with $5 million and their goal was to create wealth. And you know, but they took the five million dollars and, and they, they gave people jobs and programs. And, you know, I thought, wow, 
if they had just taken the five million dollars and invested it, they would have been fine. And um, you know, really, really understanding business. And um, you know, personally, uh, you know, I grew up in, in a in a home in a family where you know we didn't understand business. We didn't talk about business. We didn't think about business. Uh, you know, I mean, I've I've learned what I've learned. Um, you know, as an adult. Um, and uh, you know, if you think that uh, I went to the school of hard knocks, I'm talking about I've been knocked on the canvas multiple times. Um, you know, trying to learn this. Uh, there there are people sometimes that will take advantage of your lack of knowledge. Um, and, and use your skills. And I'm sure both of our guests tonight being in the music business and entertainment can certainly attest to the fact that, um, you know, pe people will people will use up your talent um, and, and they will make all the money because you're not business savvy. And um, but it's something that you can learn if you have a proper teacher and mentor. Absolutely. Bill, I tell you, man, it's always a pleasure, buddy, to listen to you. And I, that's why I like having you on the show. Uh, people get an earful and they can uh, get a thorough understanding of uh, the fundamentals of, of what you do as business. And, uh, and it's very important. It's imperative that, that, that we understand. And, you know, growing together, networking together. And uh, we, don't, we don't make any money off this social media site. You know, that's why we send them there to sign up because something explosive is going to happen. And we want to be in an informative position to give you what you need that can get you to that next step. It takes a community to build a village. And that's why the social network is there for you. You know, it's not about me, you know, it's about us. It's all about big team, little me. And that's something I wore under my pads all my life in the Facebook uniform, big team, little me. And uh, I posted that trivia question and I know you don't know the answer. You don't know the answer. You can't say it on the air anyway, but you don't know the answer. But anyway, we'll see who won the uh, $150 tonight. Hey, buddy, look, it's always a pleasure. We'll be back on the ground for tomorrow. And uh, it, it was a pleasure uh, spending some, some valuable business time with all of your listeners. We thank Larry and Alex, so Alice, Alice over at 104.5 and the engineers and all the workers over there that makes this show possible we truly thank you and uh, because without you we wouldn't be here this evening on the air so we truly thank you now we have to go we have to depart but uh lord's willing we'll be back here next thursday and all i can say to you is take care of yourself and we will see you shortly Good night. this is the cleveland gary show on 104.5 wflm the Fl